Good morning, everyone. Today might be, I guess, the first vlog ever for me. And I don't even know if it's a vlog or whatever you want to call it, but, uh, you know, I feel like, maybe this is me being narcissistic, I feel like I do enough every single day that I could film a short little video that would remain interesting to most fish people. And I have based most of my YouTube career on doing what I want to enjoy, both from uh, what would I want to see and what do I want to do. So for instance, I want to see something almost every day. I watch YouTube videos every day and I find that there's lulls, like today was Saturday morning, right? Uh, what do I get to watch? There's not a lot to watch. I woke up to one video on my news feed. I haven't had time to watch it yet, but uh, I wish there was a bunch more, for instance. So. I'm thinking maybe I put out more content more often. I don't know how often that is or anything like that. I'm not committing to anything. I'm not even saying that there will ever be another episode like this. It depends on the response and how this comes out. But I wake up to questions that are hard to answer and don't make their way into a video. Like someone today asked me, uh, you know, and hopefully if I do a vlog, this will be a regular thing where I just like wake up and stuff's on my mind. I go, let me talk about that. So someone asked me, or said, or whatever you want to call it, said, you said you're going to talk about how to raise fish uh, from a smaller size into, uh, you know, something that's profitable larger. It's got attacked by a crane fly. It's scary. Uh, which, that's basically what I've done here with these lemon tetras. So you, I buy them at the smallest size possible, and uh, then you got to raise them up. They've been sitting in that fish room. You guys have probably been watching it for two or three months, right? Um... And now they're ready to take to market, so to speak. So they're going to the fish store ready to sell. And they're super healthy and everything like that. And you can do this with your local store, too. And the problem becomes, where do you find these cheap fish? Now, you're not going to get access to that right away. That's just not going to happen. Because if you walk into a fish store and say, hey, I need 300 lemon tetras, and I need them to be cheap, and I want all this, they're just thinking you want them for personal consumption, right? So what you need to do, it's nice, getting sun. I never get sun. What you need to do is start out with some things like uh, feeder goldfish. Go buy a hundred feeder goldfish, get yourself a trough, um, put meds through them, get them super healthy, grow them out till they're about four or five inches, you know, or the reality is, like if you pick them up right now, we're in September, you want to get them pretty much as big as you can using relatively cheap food, and you want to get them to um, the biggest size you can for next June. Well, probably not even that, probably April, uh, May, June area, whatever, it really gets, you know, warm weather. So now, you've got super duper healthy fish to sell at your local store. You paid 10 cents. You should be able to get a few dollars for them each, you know, because they should be nice and big, they should be nice and robust. And you might even be able to get more money out of them because you separate out, out all the sarasa comets, the so things that are orange, and white and have really cool patterns and maybe you get some long fins in there and things like that. You're gonna get more money for those and then you've got just a standard, standard, standard goldfish but even those are worth money to someone that's gonna put them in a pond uh, and especially they're gonna be worth money to a store when it's the first fish of the season, they're healthy, they're ready to go, they're bringing fish in, they're sick, they're treating them and they need something to be selling to their customers, right? So that's one example. Well, picking up the plants, my employees are gonna hate me because I gotta kinda drop and run. I don't have time to put them all away, but this is how many plants we're up to. You guys are ordering so many that, you know, these are giant boxes, you know, full, full-size boxes here for sure. And, uh, yeah. So, now I race back to the store. It's about 10.15 right now. Hopefully I can get to the store by 11. Start unpacking some of this and uh, shipping some stuff out. You can hear the airport there, so, alright. Oh, there we go. There's causing all that noise, but get in the car and uh, get on my way. So here's the Seattle traffic trying to get back from the airport. This is the, the brutalness I go through every time I go during the day. That's why you guys, why do you do it so late at night? You can have it shipped earlier. Sometimes I can't have it shipped earlier. And uh, you know, most of the time, if I can, the traffic's like this or worse. So. You know, we're actually moving a little bit. I'm going to turn the camera off, but I was stuck not moving. You know, we're doing 10 miles an hour, so still waiting to get to the store. I realize a lot of you guys might not have seen Seattle, what it's like, you know. So as we're doing five miles an hour here, I can show you, you know, kind of some of the skyline and things 
like that. But lots of big buildings, lots of big commerce, lots of big traffic. Sunny day today at least, so, you know, view is nice. But I'll, I'll try and show you guys over the water and stuff too. There you go, you can see some pictures of the water, all the boats, all the houses. You guys want a sneak peek at something? Something probably coming in this week. Here it is. Got the Easy Green Carbon, which is basically Excel, even though I'm not a huge fan of it. People still buy it a ton, and it is useful if you need to get rid of some allergy. So basically it's our own line. It's gonna have a squirt bottle top. Uh, and then we've got the iron. You know, everyone, I've been telling everyone that's gonna be coming for a while. Uh, just wanted to make sure packaging was correct before I order up a ton, and it looks like the prototypes are gonna do really well. And different style pump head, and that's just because these have to be dosed differently. It's still one pump per 10 gallons, as you can see here. Uh, you know, and this will treat 5,000 gallons. And then over here, we've got uh, one pump per 10 gallons. This also treats 5,000 gallons. So, you know, still going to be affordable. $19.99, you know, yeah, it's going to start going, oh, it's $60 for all three of these. Yep, that's, you know, but we're giving you more for your money and that's the thing is I can't really get it much cheaper than this uh, because of packaging and shipping and all that kind of stuff so it just doesn't make sense. So I do what makes sense both for you guys and for me. Uh, I got a pack order so you know shout out to Kevin Green thanks for ordering last night buddy chatting with me and then placing an order while I slept. Love it. So that's what I'm doing now. So I just thought I would show some of the packing process. This is beautiful Andrew Green Wavy. We saw it on the website. Uh, I'm going to wrap it in a paper towel, we're going to put it in a bag, and then I put it in a box, and then after that box, it goes into uh, a padded flat rate envelope, so that that way it can get to its destination, keeping temp, it's going to keep, uh, you know, from getting crushed, and all those things, and so that's how much work goes into shipping just one plant. Now, there's five plants, yeah, we replicate this process five times, but we still get the box, still get that but that's the care level we put in, so that's why it takes so long for us to ship. Um, and I mean like packaging, like we ship very quickly, like this was placed last night, it'll go out this morning, you know, win-win. There's all the shipments packed for the day. Back in the fish room, brought kind of a project home with me, and that is, we've got a breeding pair of angels in here. They seem to be pretty good parent raisers, and so I figure I can make some good video with this by, uh, showing it, you know, them breeding and stuff like that. So I'm going to get them into this tank. We'll start feeding them. We see we can't document the process for you guys. But let me go ahead and get them in. Here they are, the pair of angels. Got a little bit of damage on their head. They were pulling babies out of the plant racks. These are breeding in the plant tank. So I said, I'll bring it home. They're raising their babies really well, as in parent raisers. That's a good thing I like. I like that about angels. So I thought, you know, I could shoot some video on this. Uh, leaving the breeders facility didn't want me taping anything so I didn't I always respect when people don't want me to film uh, I've got a couple things in the back full of orange laser quarries and a bunch of stuff now I'm on the way back to my facility my fish room to set it up so uh, you guys get to see and pick up on some tips on you really was spawning a lot of them in a very small tank so all the corridors that you'll see coming up all came out of 25 gallons of water and they were all raised in the same tank and everything so all right, I gotta drive. Well, I'm finally back in the fish room. It's 84 degrees in here. It's brutal, but I do have three bins of stuff. So I've got a whole thing of like Java moss slash spawning mops. I've got spawning mops. And my orange laser corridoras. Then I've got more Java moss, orange laser corridoras, all that kind of stuff in there as well. So what I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna move all this stuff into this tank and just let them do their thing in here. And, uh, you know, that's at least for now, because they gotta go somewhere. And I'm convinced that this tank back here, I'm convinced the corridors are eating the guppy fry or something is going on with this tank, because I do believe I should have more guppy fry. So eventually I'll move this colony of orange lasers out, maybe join the two. Um, but I need to do something with these guppies as well. So I need to start getting this into water. So the impressive part about this is all these fish came out of a 25 gallon tall aquarium, all bred and raised up inside that tank. And it might be hard to see because of glare. Let me try and get you a better shot here, but there's a lot of orange laser corridors as you pan through here, right? This is a 40 breeder now, obviously. So you can realize how densely packed 
that 25 was. Um, here's what the spawning tank looked like. Remember, this is in a 40. It was in a 25, but there was all these spawning mops. And I know it's hard for you guys to see, so I'll come up from top here, but that's rope, there's yarn, there's java moss, there's you know, this piece of wood, there's all these things in here. And so we'll see if we can't recreate that going on in here. But once I get the lighting arriving, you know, at the store, I can bring it here. We can really light this thing up and see how it's looking. So here's my plan. My plan is to grab the fish out of here, get them back into here, because we've used this, and then I'm gonna get those Dumbo ears into this tank and really start reproducing them again. So that way I can get the numbers up and uh, not fail so hard. So there we go. Got the breeders in the net, got the babies on the outside, got these guys moved. Project done. That's what I think I'm going to love about uh, this vlog series. Is I've been saving all these to do big videos and big projects and stuff's not getting done. And my fish and my hobby are suffering for it. So, you know, I've been wanting to get that done for probably two months and I haven't done it. So I'm super stoked. Well, that's it for me today. Uh, going to go edit. Make sure you join me later tonight for the live stream. Starts at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you there.